Hello and welcome back to a Unit 3D tutorial series, hooray! Uh, this is episode sort of 1.5 I suppose, where I'm going to cover some things I mentioned in the last episode and how to do them. So in this particular episode I'm going to show you how to use the Asset Store and import stuff into the Unity Editor so that you can use stuff in your game, because if you haven't figured it out already, uh, which I kind of hinted as to what it was, uh, then this is just a little tutorial on how to do that. So. I'll start off with the Asset Store, so you click on Window, or you can press Control 9, uh, you go to the Asset Store here, uh, in the drop down list, and then it will load up, and it will say connecting, and then depending on your internet speed it will load, and there we go. Um, and then, and basically the Asset Store is something where a lot of free models, sounds, textures and stuff are, but also tons of paid systems and add-ons and networking stuff also are. Um, Kind of for people who, there's a lot of stuff on this, if you can't like afford a graphics artist or something like that, you can get models that might be similar to something you want. Um, there's a lot of tutorial stuff in here as well actually that they've started adding, um, where people making uh, YouTube videos uh, can now upload things. I'm not going to do it with this series because I feel it's just better to put it on YouTube. Um, and it's a little bit easier than downloading another program and doing other stuff. Uh, but yeah, actually no, it's us on Steam. I uh, don't... Worry about that. Wow. Uh, anyway, anyway, let's just carry on with this. So, uh, let's get a 3D model. Okay, so, let's click on the 3D models tab. You've got um, millions of things. You've got animation, audio, complete projects, editor extensions, particle systems, scripting services, shaders, and textures and materials. Now, uh, actually, what's on the top three? A terrain assets, soldiers, destroyed city, space robot, male character pack, shantytown. Ooh. Uh, let's, so if you go to here, you can click price, and this will take you just all the free models. There's like quite a lot, uh, but uh, some of the models that you may want may be a little bit, um, you may have to cost you a little bit, but probably not that much, maybe one or two pound, uh, which is probably about two, three dollars. Um, but some of the stuff you can get is pretty good. Anyway, uh, let's go with a treasure chest. Okay, is it rigged? Is the lid? Or is it just locked? Da, 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 da. The scenery object, okay, yeah, we'll go with this. So if you don't actually have this object available, it might be because it's either uh, been taken off or something else. Actually, it was added uh, quite a while ago, yeah, I've not seen it before. Maybe, oh, it looks like it might have all of a sudden made it free or something. Strange. Uh, there we go, we import it. It'll import it somewhere. It's going to import it to a folder there that I've just seen appear. And we're going to get one other object. Uh, now, if you've come back and watched this tutorial, probably from episode 2, because I'm probably going to use these objects in episode 2, then, uh, hello, and, uh, yeah. Do -do -do. Right, and what other stuff is there? It's a watchtower. Hmm. Eh. Sure, why not? I think we'll... Yeah, we could probably go with this. This is a free model of a uh, pack that you can sort of see here. There's two packs and stuff, but we'll go with this building. You can probably use it for something. Uh, so we'll download that as well, and we'll use that. Uh, obviously, credit to the person who made it, which it doesn't say. It used to say, "Oh, publisher, uh, M A A T Art or something." Matt, Matt, Matt. Oh, I don't know. Anyway. Uh, so that's all done, and you can just close the uh, asset store. Then, if we just sort of zoom uh, down into the game a little bit, uh, we're going to sort of put some stuff. So we're going to put the watchtower. Oh, it's actually. Oh, that's odd. Is it just all separately done? Okay, let's just open up the watchtower scene. Uh, yeah, save that uh, watchtower. Let's just uh, when you do, what you can do with that is you just drag it into here. It's so that we don't have to sort of build it up again. I mean, it's it's probably done, so you can sort of rotate it around and give it uh, different things. It's a pretty good model actually, uh, especially what you, for you can you can get, and obviously you can sort of change where you want this on the actual watchtower as well. So we've now uh, sort of got that. So I'll go back to my scene, episode 2, da, 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 save, let's go over to here, hopefully you can remember all the zoom functions and stuff like that, go back into the elephant eye, 
uh, go to Watchtower, and then Dragon Watchtower. Now you can see the scale of it is quite big, uh, but so we're just going to take it down to about 0 0.7, because I think 0 0.7 will fit the scale of our game. may end up making it slightly bigger in the future, but that seems about right. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to sort of make it aim this way. So that we're going to maybe have our character unlock a bridge where he can sort of go over to this tower. Uh, I'm not sure if we can animate the flag at all at any point. Uh, do, 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 do. No, I don't think we can. That's okay. I was seeing if we could actually animate anything. Oh, we can move these around as well. So if you actually wanted it to be a different rotation, you can. You can mess around with that. And then what we can do is to unlock the bridge or to get the key for the door. So what we'll do is we'll create maybe a separate level. So you'll walk into here, it'll fade out and fade in because obviously you're not going to be able to fit much in here. And this building will sort of make it so you go in and it's sort of a giant room, like a TARDIS from Doctor Who or something, in a way. Uh, anyway, uh, treasure chest, and just drag it on. You can see the scale of that is just huge. So what we can do is just scale this down to perhaps uh, 0 0.3. And just copy and paste that into these. That way, if, the reason why I just uh, copy and paste it as to the right, same dimensions is just so it keeps its scale. You just do that, keep it above the ground, and there we go. So we've got a chest there, which uh, will script that when we click on it, it gives us a key or something, and then uh, a bridge will appear. Actually, is this, this isn't even on the ground. Oh no. Uh, Let's just try and make it on the ground. Yeah. There we go. Is that good? She cuts out one of the steps. And that seems good. Pretty happy with that. Uh, but yeah, so that kind of concludes our tutorial. Actually, no, it doesn't. You guys want to know how to import objects from a folder or something. So let me just... So you get up your documents folder and you can find something. Um... Let me just find something that's not from the Oxcut Alpha. Let me import. Okay, so basically, this will work for importing textures, really. Uh, so, basically, what you can do is you get your image, or whatever, and you literally just. Oh, actually, let's just not do that there. Go to Assets, and then I'm just going to drag in a thumbnail. And you could actually use this as a texture if you wanted to, which would be really odd to do. But if I just drag this on, add, and you do that, and it would you'd literally just... It's like another texture in the game, but I'm just going to remove that. But yeah, that's how you do that. You can sort of get textures online and stuff like that. So yeah, if you have any other questions, do let me know, and I will see you in episode two. Uh, thank you very much for watching, and yeah, bye!